Welcome to our um, monthly combined Christian Churches Victory Meeting, which we have been hosting for the last 10 years. And over the last um, three months, we've now we've entitled it Where To Now? Um, so just a few housekeeping things, just so you'd like to mute your mic um, and let you know that tonight is being recorded. And if you don't want to see us to see your face, you can turn your video off. Um, or if you're having trouble with your bandwidth, you can turn it off as well. Okay, so the purpose of our meetings, where to now, over the last three months, we've had world leaders from different countries to come and share what they think is happening, what God is saying to them in such uncertain times throughout the world. And maybe some changes in the, that needs to happen in the church. Um, there's been restrictions being held, being made on the church and the people, how this affects us. And how is God preparing his church for the next phase as we come out of COVID or we adapt to different ways that COVID has put us into. And so tonight we have three world denominational leaders from Australia, Romania and India. Um, who are going to share with us their thoughts. And if you'd like some more information on our speakers, you can go to blogger.com and search for Beautiful Feet Task Force and you'll find some information about our speakers there. And our MC tonight is Phil Edwards and he is our CEO from Vision Christian Radio. Um, I'd just like to share a couple of scriptures with you um, to encourage us all as some things I believe that God is saying to me or to us and to share with you. Um, we go back to God has given us two commandments found in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 to 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. So how do we love the Lord your God? We go to Isaiah 40, 30 to 31. Um, and this is the Amplified Version. It says, even youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait for the Lord who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God, like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary, and they will walk and not grow tired. And another, to wait on the Lord. So it says in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God is drawing us close to him. He wants us to be close to him. He wants us to be intimate to him. And so that we can be, um, we can be witnesses in this world. So we can get along our neighbours and our friends and encourage them during these times and for what is, comes ahead of us. So um, welcome tonight and get inspired from these Great speakers from across the world. And now I'd just like to hand it over to Howard, who's just going to pray and um, bring us into the meeting again. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Joy. And uh, hope everybody has a great night tonight. Shall we just uh, commit our time to the Lord and uh, just ask you to pray along with us for a moment. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for all the challenges that are facing your church at this time. For you told us to rejoice in all things. And so, Lord, although there are many challenges, we thank you that, Lord, you were not taken by surprise by any of this. But Lord, you have answers for every person, for every church, for every ministry, for every community and every nation. 
And so, Father, as we, uh, as we discuss tonight, as we allow your spirit to permeate this, this meeting, even though we're flung across the earth, as we gather together on this technology, we thank you that your spirit is here to anoint and to refresh both our speakers and our ears. Lord, that we might hear something from you tonight that is helpful for us, that is helpful for that which you have us involved in. And we ask for your Holy Spirit guidance for our speakers, for our tech team, and Lord, for each one of us to hear your voice. Father, we thank you for the powerful working and ministration of your Holy Spirit in this place. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name that this is something that is to be established for our victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Phil. I'm going to hand it over to our um, MC for tonight, Phil Edwards, who is the, as Joy mentioned, the CEO of Vision Christian Radio in Australia. He's had uh, quite, a, uh, quite an involved uh, radio career and uh, he's probably one of Australia's most experienced radio men. He's held every position possible and uh, he's really got a, a heart for the kingdom. He runs Vision Christian Radio in Australia, which is the largest uh, Christian radio um, channel operating over 700 um, distribution points or channels across Australia. And he's the chair of the United Christian Broadcasters and a few other things as well. All that information is in his um, bio information, which is on the blog that Joy referred to. So if you want uh, further information about him or any of the other speakers here tonight, we, um, we just encourage you to uh, have a look at that. So go to blogger.com, search Beautiful Feet Task Force. And that's where you'll get all the information. So, Phil Edwards, thank you very much. You're on. Thank you, Howard. And uh, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for that introduction. I'm not sure that I'm, I'm the most experienced uh, uh, you know, radio or media guy in Australia, but I've been around and done a little bit. And it's such an honour and a privilege to be able to serve the Lord through this ministry in Australia and to be with you tonight around the world. Uh, tonight is all about uh, what we can learn from each other and also participating. So can I encourage you, for starters, I'm going to do this right now. Uh, open up the chat and put your name in there and where you're from. So I'm going to do it right now. If you could do the same. So hi, Phil here in Brisbane, Australia. So thanks to uh, Derek in South Africa for doing that. And Bert in Germany, welcome to you. Uh, Mazabuka, Zambia. I've not been there. Thank you so much, uh, Brightman. So if you could just uh, make yourself um, aware of how to use the chat, because that's important tonight for asking questions. Uh, and I say tonight because it's nighttime where we are right now, but I know it's morning elsewhere and afternoon elsewhere. So... It's great to have you all here. Just before I introduce uh, our, our first guest speaker for tonight, I just want to highlight the, the photograph on the wall behind me, if you can see it. That's actually the, the house where I grew up. It's out in the middle of uh, the state of New South Wales, here in Australia. Uh, it's, it's a structure that's well over 100 years old now. Uh, we moved out of it in about 1978. And it was just about derelict at that point and moved into a new house. But I have that picture there to remind me of, of my own heritage and where I've come from. And I think that's something that we need to have a firm grasp on as Christian leaders. To know where we've come from in the Lord and to know what he's called us to do. And Joy, it's so good that you pointed out that, uh, that scripture when, when Jesus boiled down you know, all the complexity of the law into those two very simple little things to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, and it's times like we find ourselves in today where we also look to what is most important 
And that's where I think what's happening at the moment is a really, really good thing for us in the church. And I hope tonight we can learn uh, some good things there as we continue to tell the world about the good things God has done. Psalm 96 and verse 2 is one that really drives us here at Vision. And that is that we should sing to the Lord, praise his name, and tell of his great works, proclaim his salvation. And I think we're all in the same, on the same page there, aren't we? So let me introduce our first guest, and it's a real honour to be doing so as well. Uh, the Honourable Pastor Andrew Evans is, uh, has been around the traps quite a bit in ministry and in politics in Australia and has been recognised with, with really what's the highest order in this country of honour, uh, and that is the, uh, the Order of, the Aust of Australia Medal. Uh, he's, uh, as I said, been in, in ministry and politics, started a, a little church in Adelaide, uh, I think it's only a small one, uh, and, uh, and still going strong, has been me a member of, uh, of much of the move of God uh, in this country, and I'm sure you've had a, an opportunity to read through uh, the information on the blog there. But it is, it is just such a, an honour and a privilege to have you here tonight, Pastor Andrew. And so I'll, I'll hand over to you as we wrestle with this big question, where to now for the church? So each of our speakers tonight have nine minutes. And as they're speaking, please put your questions in the, uh, the, the chat. That'd be fantastic. So, Andrew, it's over to you. Well, thank you for your kind invitation and uh, introduction. It's lovely to be here and see this great work that you're doing through this uh, station. Um, you know, this worry about this virus that we have and how things are going in the world and how bad it is, God gave us the answer 3,000 years ago. And uh, it was when the wisest man in the world had a visitation from God. His name was King Solomon. And Solomon was in his peak. Everything was going fantastic for him. He was building the temple. He, was, he conquered all the nations around him. He'd become incredibly rich. And life couldn't have been better. And then one early morning, God came to him and said to him, you know, there's going to be famines and there's going to be pestilence and there's going to be these kind of issues. It's not all going to be like this. It's not all going to be so marvelous. But if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. Now that is an unchanging principle that has worked every time. The first time I saw it in action was 60 years ago. Australia invited a young evangelist called Billy Graham to Australia. Two years before he came, he sent his team and they went all around Australia urging churches and setting up prayer meetings. So when he came, there'd been a massive amount of prayer along these lines that were encouraged by King Solomon. The result of his visit was the greatest move Australia's ever had. This, this is some of the statistics. Over 3 million people, that's a third of Australians at that time, heard him and attended to his meetings in person. In Melbourne, they had the largest crowd to the MCG ever, 143,000. In Sydney, they had to take two stadiums 150,000. There was 2% of, of the Australian population made decisions for Christ, and many of the great leaders we've had since then were converted in those meetings. And then we settled down. Just as Jesus said, you ought always to pray and not to give up, but we do tend to give up. And uh, so we gradually slipped away and gradually slipped away until 60 years later, we got to that stage of backsliding as a nation that we began to legislate sin. And when you legislate in your parliament sin, the nation is in for trouble. And 
it looked pretty bad for Australia. It looked as if uh, there was no hope. But a 77-year-old lady in Perth was woken up at four in the morning, and this is what she said. Her name was none other than the great Margaret Court. And she said, I believe it's time for the church to rise with a strong voice of righteousness, truth, and justice. God woke me at 4 a.m. on the 8th of March with these words. And then he, she went on to say there was going to be a shift and a shifting in this nation. And he said, I've given you a Christian prime minister. And if you will rise and pray and humble yourself and do as uh, Chronicles tells us to do, I will heal your land. So for the first time for 60 years, I began to notice the whole of the church got so worried about the future of Australia that by and large, multitudes of Christians began to pray like they've never prayed before. And um, everyone said, uh, no, nah, Scott Morrison, he's just had a short term, he's gone and he will never get in. But to the surprise of everybody, <laughs> He had a miracle and he won. The miracle also was that I was there on the day at his church preaching in his church at the same day that he won the elections. It wasn't planned by him or me. I was the last choice because they had a guest speaker who got sick in the last minute and they yelled out to me in the last minute to come. But it was a phenomenal day where we saw an answer to prayer as we humbled ourselves, sought after God, with everything we had, and the result is we saw a miracle in the government of Australia. Now our challenge is to keep going. And I believe that's what we need to start doing now and keep going for revival for Australia, but turn this nation around to bring it back to its roots and let us see God mightily move on this nation. He may be using this pandemic to try to send people back to God. Uh, for, uh, but, but with all the technology, we were reaching million, millions more. For instance, my son has got a church in Melbourne where everything shut down. Well, he, he's gone online and just does it online. Well, he tells me he has a million people listening to him <laughs> in his church. He then decided they generally have in June, uh, they have a first fruits offering to help their ministry, but they're going and he says, we didn't know whether to cancel it because no one could come to church and we're just doing it online. And they said, no, we'll keep going with it. So he kept his first groups offering online and he got $2 million. <laughs> so the church is just still growing and exploding. And we've got another thing to our channel. When we get back into church, which is important for discipling and so on, we've still got this channel of outreach which we've, all of them have found now of a new way of getting the message out there. And I've got a feeling that we're going to move forward mightily for a great latter-day revival. Now, Jesus understood this. And he said, you ought always to pray in Luke 18 and not to give up. Then he goes down to verse 8 and he says, when the sun comes back, he's referring to Jesus coming back. When he comes back, Will he find faith on the earth? Question mark. So we have to look at the scriptures and see what it says about that. Well, there are two streams. One says there's going to be a falling away and a decline. Another says there's going to be a revival. And it seems that the, the key of prayer and persistence that he talked about in that chapter is what he wants if we're going to see a revival. And uh, in some of the countries in the world, they put it to tests like in Korea, and they've seen the change of nation from a Buddhist nation to a Christian nation. We can do the same. Let's get into it, prayer with everything we've got, and see God mightily move. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Fantastic. So there be any questions? I don't know when my time's up, so you better interrupt well, me. You're, you're doing well. You've gone under time. So, you know, you're not a preacher. <laughs> Most preachers I know go, go over time. So do we have any questions from the floor? We've got an amen there. So thank you, uh, Sawado, for that. Some questions from the floor for uh, Pastor Andrew. 
And if you could put those in the chat box, that would be uh, great. Um, I, ha I have one, and I think you, you touched on this, Andrew. What do you think is the primary key, the number one thing that we need to be doing right now, not only for Australia to have a turn, but for the world to turn its face to the Lord? I think there's no other thing that people have to really pray. I mean, you take the New Guinea church. I, I was there when it's infancy. And uh, they had just in, in 1948, they started. 1958, I, I got there. Uh, 63, I got there rather. And, um, but the missionaries had set up prayer meetings every day of the week for the few Christians who were, that were there. And every morning you'd lay in your bed in your house and you'd hear them down the church praying. And they'd be praying it before they went out into, the, into their workplace. These are primitive people who can hardly read and write. And so they started this prayer going. Today, the 70 years after since they started, they are 20% of Papua New Guinea belong to our movement, along as the other Pentecostals. There's something like 600,000 and 3,500 churches, all indigenous, running their own shows, having taken their own offerings, praying, because prayer is always the key. Jesus did nothing until he'd fasted and prayed 40 days. And after that, it says he came back in the power of the Spirit. Wonderful. So... Obviously, we need to be praying ourselves, but what I'm hearing you say is, as leaders, we need to be leading other people to pray, creating opportunity and inviting them in. Yes. 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 Jesus put out, see, our problem with prayer is we do give up, just as Jesus said in Luke 18. You're always to pray not to give up. So he gave us a motivation. And the motivation was, if you pray, you'll see God move. If you don't, you won't. That's the last day church. You're going to have nothing happening if you don't pray. But if you really get into prayer, you'll have a move of God. All right. And the churches that are trying that, it works. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Andrew. Uh, really appreciate what you've had to say here tonight. We're going to move on now to our second speaker tonight. Uh, and uh, let me see. We have... I've lost my place. Here we go. My apologies. Now, please excuse me if I get your, your name pronounced incorrectly. Yon Tutor, is that is that right? You'll just need to unmute yourself there, Yon. In, uh, in Bucharest, in Romania. And isn't this wonderful that we can all be together tonight around the world? Yon is the president of the Assemblies of God in Romania and also the president of the Bucharest Christian Centre. Uh, he's uh, he's a, a father with two daughters. I'm sure that keeps your hands pretty full, does it? Having two girls. Yes, it's true. Both are married. Ah, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, but I'll uh, uh, rather than read out everything about you, uh, we've had ample opportunity to to learn about you. What's God saying to you in Romania? I uh, hello everybody. Greetings from. Uh, Romania from Europe. God bless you all of you. First of all, I want to express my appreciation for the invitation. You know, um, Romania, and I will share uh, on two extremes. We have been under the communist regime for 50 years. The revolution came, and I will not discuss too many things about the, the revolution, but the, the pandemic came and we were shocked and you know the story with uh, Italy, with Spain and what has happened in uh, Romania with the high rate. We were not prepared for such event to close the churches, even if I saw the pastor under the, the communist regime. When we were locked down and not have a service, we start and I encourage the pastor all over to start to communicate more with the people on WhatsApp and to encourage the people 
and to do a Zoom meeting, what we never done before the, the Zoom meeting. Also, God laid in my heart to start to pray for each district in the country. We have 42 districts, and every night I will meet with a group of pastors and pray for a district. After we will finish with the districts, we will start to pray for the nation. Now, we have two kinds of workers in Romania. The workers who are almost already paralyzed and they don't know how to do in the pandemic. They are out of the picture because they are disappointed the attendance in the church because we have service online, we have service out, outside. Also now we are inside of the church but with the legal distance, you know, to keep the social distance and mask and everything. And the people are afraid. And what is the, the I would say the devil uh, techniques when someone have a COVID-19, the first question, when they go to the hospital, they ask, have you been to the church? Because this is the first question that people want to blame the church to be the place where we spread the virus. And this is not true. God help us during the, this time and myself, I took the pandemic like a blessing. Even the word to use the blessing, the pandemic is not the proper word to, to use. But I start to preach the message relate how we will pass the valley, the pandemic, and encourage uh, the people. Also, during this time, we plan churches. Now at the end of the month, in Assemblies of God, we have an ordination service and there will be almost over 30 new pastors will be ordained. Even we had the general council and we couldn't keep the people to bring the people to Bucharest. We had the general council we did in uh, online. And for one week, we put services online and we praise God for, uh, for this thing. I believe the key is the pastor, is the minister. Because if I am afraid, I, 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 need to, I need to share with you because the church is closed. Many pastors died in Romania. Priests died. Uh, many Christians died. And the people are so scared to attend the church because they, they, they feel Oh, if I will go to the church, I will, be, I will be sick. We took the step of victory and we looked to the, to the church from another perspective. And I said, we will not collapse. Even the attendance of the churches, some pastors are telling me half of the people are attending. Another pastor are, uh, are very disappointed, only 30% are attending the service because they are scared. Also, during the pandemic, when we didn't have the, the students in the school, I took the step of faith. We are under construction. And I will say humbly, the only K-12 school in half of Romania, it's our school. It's not another in half of Romania. And because we didn't have the students in the school, I discussed with the construction company and we start to build. And this is what the, we, we need to trust in God because the virus will go on. You know, will be two, three, I don't know what, what kind of a virus will be, but we don't need to be paralyzed. We need to be encouraged and we need to trust in God. What I'm expecting and just uh, this week, I have the, uh, the meeting with the key leader from different denominations. We met and we discussed a strategy to, to impact the whole nation and the continent of Europe. And we don't need to, to go down and to be upset. Why God allowed this? Why? No, no. 
We trust in God. God knows everything. And if we have this spirit and encourage the people, God will, uh, will bless the, the ministry. Depend on the leaders. And I encourage, even I met with the political uh, leaders because they, they are coming and visit us. We met at the parliament or uh, to, with the prime minister or uh, another uh, leader. Depend on the minister what kind of attitude I have. Because the attitude, and I learned from the English people, the attitude will determine the altitude. And from us, in Romania, we are not blocked because of this virus, and we go on like never before. But need people, and I, I appreciate Brother Andrew, what he shared and um, say hello to, to the big boss and the, the famous Brother Andrew, the superintendent. And, uh, uh, we don't need to back off, we need to go on. And God is with us. Even next Sunday, I have a baptism service. This week, I had another baptism service, and the people are accepting Christ. I, I believe, and maybe I, uh, I'm, I hope not to be wrong, the key is the leader. If the leader is paralyzed, the church is paralyzed, and the nation is paralyzed. If the leader will stand up and speak, the word of faith and to be, you know, to not to go to the extreme and to say to start to pray for the coronavirus to go out and have all kinds of programmation. We need to be well balanced according to the Bible and we don't need to go to the extreme. And if we are well balanced, God will bless the ministry. Yeah. And I don't want to, to continue. I want to bless everybody and invite you to come to visit us in Romania. We live in Bucharest and we keep going. And we pray for Australia, but not only for Australia, from different parts of the world, because we will start to pray nation by nation. And nine o'clock in the evening, I meet with the group of pastors and I, I'm full of enthusiasm and what God is doing and what we'll do. I'm very optimistic. That's wonderful, Juan. Thank you so much. And it's the good thing being in Australia when people are praying alphabetically, we're near the top of the list. Yes, yes. <laughs> but there's a really, a really good point. A you really know, Phil, point you we have, yeah, we have Romanian churches in Australia. I have visited, you know, the, the church in Perth, uh, in uh, Adelaide, in uh, Melbourne, in uh, what was another, Sydney. We have Romanian churches. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you raise a very good point about the leader or the minister being the key. But there's a, there's a big problem, I think, is a lot of pastors and ministers are afraid themselves. How could we be helping them? I, you know, I would say we need to develop a relationship and meet with them and tell them, don't stay in a cave. Come with me and go on. Leave your cave and go on because God is with us. And I will use the word what Martin Luther said. If me and God is one side and the whole world is on another side, I will form the majority because God is with me. This is, what, what, this is the, uh, the attitude what we, we need to have a leaders. And in a special for the national leader who are paralyzed and don't know what to say. And I don't want to say a bad word, but I, I, they are in Romania, a leader, a national leader who don't respond even to the phone. And the, the virus is not transmitted by a phone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Juan. And a reminder to Blessing. everyone, please. Blessing to everybody. Yes, God bless you. Please keep... Uh, put your questions in the uh, the chat if you have questions um, you'll have an opportunity uh, at the end to for, to have your question put forward to our speakers again tonight uh, we're going to move on now in our little trip around the world here we've been to Australia Romania let's go to India right now 
where uh, Dr. P.G. Vargas is uh, is there. He's uh, also uh, quite involved in a lot of ministry. Um, and uh, I, th I thought it was quite interesting where you started uh, ministry in a small town known for a Hindu pilgrimage, which is... Uh, Perhaps was that a hard place for you to start your uh, your minister your Christian ministry? Yes, God was very kind to me to put put me in the hard place, so that was my training camp, and we have come a long way. The ministry was started in uh, 1972. Now we have planted more than 10,000 churches all over North India. Oh, we, don't, we don't go to South India, we concentrate on North India because South India is evangelized. Uh, so God gave me the burden to reach the unreached at any cost. Wonderful. So let, let me talk what is happening in India, what God is speaking to the church of God in India. Yes, please. Uh, uh, we believe that God is sanctifying, God is cleansing the church in India because the church was diverting its attention from souls to the establishment, buildings and functions. A lot of money was spent on buildings and other things. So Second Chronicles 7.14 it says, if my people called by my name will humble, search their heart. So the church turned about 180 degrees around and we are looking inside why this is happening. I preached all the time that coronavirus, God did not send it, but God permitted it to come to cleanse the church and see a mighty revival. Jesus was in the tomb for three days. So this time of coronavirus, now we have lockdown in India started on March 23rd and still it is bad. In a state called Kerala where Christian percentage is very high, the government put a restriction that only five people can come together anywhere, wedding, church or whatever it may be, churches are closed. But Jesus was in the tomb for three days. So this is the time just, but Jesus was not silent. He was preaching, he was moving. So in the same way, the church is moving inside, not outside. We don't have open air meetings. We don't have track distribution. We don't, even we don't preach on the televisions. Now, a Christian televisions, of course we preach, even I preach, but the movie, channels where I was preaching, it is all closed for Christian ministries because for several reasons. And the government is, uh, all the governments in India, they are anti-Christian, anti-evangelization and anti-conversion. But this is the three days of Jesus in the tomb. And when we will come out, it will be a great mighty one. Now this pan pandemic, this problem, has brought the churches together. Amazingly, the churches have come together, especially the full gospel churches. We have come together and we are thinking what to do. There is a, it never happened before. So this is a blessing in disguise, I can say. And uh, there is a unity and every first Tuesday of the month from all over India, we are coming together on Zoom and discussing our problems and our ideas. When Jesus came out of the tomb, he proved that he was alive. And that is what we believe. When this, 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 this pandemic uh, problem will be over, he will prove that we don't have to do it. We have to only cooperate with him. He will prove that he is alive. And there will be an outpouring after the resurrection there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and there will be a sanctification and there will be a harvest. Uh, we, we all believe that. And we, amazingly, 
though the churches are closed, I must say everyone is preaching. The women are preaching in India, you know, this is a men oriented country. But now the women are preaching on Zoom, uh, even their own uh, YouTube channels. And everybody, previously it was the pastor, it was like a, like a, I'm not blaming the mainline churches, it was like the mainline church, the people were going, the priest was conducting the mass, here the pastor was preaching, he was praying, but the people were just participants, but everything changed. Now everybody is preaching, and here is praying, number one preaching, number two praying, the prayer has gone up, I cannot even imagine it. Every church is, every full gospel church is praying. 20 days, 40 days, 100 days, 125 days, 150 days, non-stop, they are praying, fasting and praying. I'm not saying everybody is fasting, but fasting and prayer is going on. There is 24 hours prayer. There are months of prayer. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in the book of Acts, those who were scattered, they were preaching. So in the same manner, everybody is preaching on the Zoom. Everybody is preaching on the YouTube. And there is a revival inside. We cannot see it. But there are baptisms in every church. We cannot even believe it. I'm not talking about uh, nominal Christians or Catholics or Anglicans coming. I'm talking about because we are working among the non-Christian states, 23 states of North India. Hundreds and hundreds of people are being baptized, but we cannot talk about it. We will be in trouble because the government is against us. And last week they passed a bill in the parliament uh, about uh, Christians getting foreign money. Uh, so, uh, so, but they are afraid. The government is afraid and they want to uh, uh, kill us by suffocating us. But they cannot because the church is alive. The persecution has increased everywhere because the government is in their favor. So they can do anything and there will not be any action, whatever it may be. Uh, and the final point, God is raising hundreds of house churches. Previously, it was building oriented in the big auditoriums and people were con trying to construct uh, auditoriums, uh, church buildings for uh, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 they were planning. Now the churches are scattered. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of house churches and that will be the future. After this coronavirus will go, what, is, what we are expecting, we are expecting churches everywhere churches in almost every Christian houses. So the people are preaching, there are there is result, there is healing, and people are becoming bold to preach. And uh, there will be hundreds and hundreds, of, there are thousands of hundreds, thousands of home churches, house churches, and it will multiply. That's fantastic. I've got a, a, a question here, and if you have a, a question, please put it in the chat uh, from Sawado in, um, in Rwanda. So uh, thank you. Great to have you as part of this today. How can we stand together and rise prayer for the pandemic? Because we know the gospel is unstoppable and God is unstoppable. Uh, we, we are, as soon as somebody will become a Christian in my mission, this is what people ask me. What is, we don't take a church planted by another mission. We don't take a worker trained by another mission. All my pastors, we have 3,067 ministers. All of them are our own babies, our own Timothys. And what is the secret of our success? We, as soon as a person will come for baptism, we give them five pieces of advice. Number one, read your Bible and pray every day. We start like this, read, read your Bible and pray every day. Number two, keep away from sins and causes of sins, just like smoking. Is it a sin? No, but it's a cause for sin. So keep away from sins and causes of sins. Number one, four, three, the middle finger, have fellowship with the saints, not only really going to a church, but have fellowship with born again Christians. This is the most secret. The fourth one, the, the, the ring finger, 
You know, if you are in love with somebody, if you are engaged, you'll be talking and thinking about your uh, girlfriend and boyfriend. Uh, I say, if you are born again, if you have a boyfriend inside, talk about, to him, talk about him. Talk about Jesus to somebody every day. That is the uh, advice we give on the phone. And the fifth one is give your tithe. But the fourth one is most important for us, for the church growth. So the church is growing. That's really good. I was just writing those down myself as you were saying those. Read and pray every day. Keep away from sins or causes of sins. Have fellowship with the saints. Tell others about Jesus every day and give your tithe. How simple is that? So good. And some uh, some good blessings there for you as well. Thank you, George, for your comment and Bert for your uh, for your comment. Um, just uh, God's blessing on, on you and what's happening there with the churches in, in North India. Thank you so much. Um, this is good. This is good. Big questions here. What is God doing and where? what is next for the church? It's really, really good. So thank you so much. Uh, Howard, I might hand back over to you at, at this stage to, uh, to take us where you'd like to. Uh, but just thank you, everybody, for your contributions tonight. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, um, Phil, as well as uh, our invited guests, uh, what you've had to say. I think it's um, certainly we're living in unusual days and uh, we need the uh, leaders around the world to speak up and say what's important. And it's very interesting. Um, I didn't tell any of our guests what's gone on before, what's been said before, but those of you that have been uh, on these over the last three months um, will recognize a lot of similarity between uh, what's being said tonight and what uh, others have said previously. That it's about the fundamentals and it's about uh, prayer and sharing the gospel um, and just doing the things that we know to do. Uh, PG, your five points, um, just the basic advice that we should be giving to anybody when they make a decision for Christ. Um, I know Pastor Andrew, uh, you um, led Paradise Church in Adelaide for many years. And uh, during that time, led it to be um, what was at the time Australia's largest church. And, uh, grew it to about 4,000 people. But during that time, people came to Christ, as far as I know, pretty close to every week at the church. And people were, um, I visited a couple of times and saw the altar calls and uh, people coming forward and receiving Christ. According to Pastor Andrew's records, um, about 25,000 people or more gave their lives to Christ at that church during the time that he was the senior pastor there. And that's because they took the basic uh, fundamental stuff, invite people to Christ, no matter what else we do in our church service and, and churches for the believers after all, but, but there often is and ought to always be visitors there that are not believers. And we need to give them that invitation. But I think from what's been said, um, one of the things that is <clears throat> upon us at this time is that uh, because we are in unusual days, church is different. And we've all recognized that church is different. And we don't know if it will go back to being what it was before or even whether it should. Um, maybe some of the things that PG has shared with us about um, there are preachers everywhere now, not just the, not just the pastors who stood in pulpits once, but um, everybody's taking their opportunity to preach the gospel. And uh, maybe, maybe that's what Jesus intended when he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, he didn't say stay home and build a church. Actually, as I, I recall, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But your job is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So uh, the gospel of the kingdom is a thing that changes people. And uh, I think the, uh, 
the the sad thing and i think um Jan, you you touched on it about uh there's there's people that are worried about the um the situation there's pastors and ministers leaders that are worried about the situation and they've got a negative outlook about things and the encouragement is to encourage those pastors to be positive um, help them to understand the gospel how it relates to us in a difficult and or persecuted time and to really be positive about the opportunities we might see this as a very negative time uh, because there's certainly a lot of health issues a lot of economic cost and a lot of social cost people are not allowed to freely move about so much to mix with others to have meetings um, we've only just started allowing people back to uh, professional sport as uh, spectators in this country um, but with huge restrictions and uh, we are a massive sporting country but we had our all our stadiums when they opened up about a month ago restricted to a maximum of 25 percent capacity and uh, they're, they're bending the rules to try and get more people in for the grand finals coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, because it sport is such a huge part of our country um, and yet there is uh, an indication of how much socially our country has been affected and um, we don't know what they're going to do with the with the grand finals of the, of the rugby and rugby league and Australian football but people are crying out for fellowship whether they're believers or not they're crying out for connectivity with other people and uh, well PG I, I've been to India many times and we've been in your ministry several times we traveled across north india we see the difficulties there um and yet i see indians as being some of the most resourceful people i've met anywhere in the world um they they may not have much but they know how to go and get some more and they, they anywhere you go whatever country you go to if you find indians they're doing business um and indians are resourceful people so even though their country is under persecution and i'm in touch with so many leaders across india and there certainly has been a lot of difficulties from the government um, both both um, official persecution and unofficial persecution they're rising to the challenge and uh, it's exciting and uh, i am glad to hear that even though in difficult times there are people that are rising to the challenge and that they're preaching wherever the opportunity allows and maybe it might just be standing on some of our sanctimonious toes of the preachers in that the people who we preach to for years generations <laughs> decades centuries um, are now actually becoming the preachers and they're going out and doing the thing that jesus told them to do two thousand years ago so <laughs> maybe there is as you said a blessing in disguise in this situation that the people might actually take to heart and do something um, i just want to come back to something that pastor andrew said um, right at the start and uh, it's so critical it's it's something that we know is foundational and fundamental to the christian life and that's prayer uh, we need to get back to prayer in a manner that perhaps we have let slide and uh, prayer needs to be uh, an important part of the ministry of the church i see so many churches doing um, exciting stuff but there's not much in the way of prayer happening and uh, i think what's happening now is there's a falling away in some places because people don't have that social interaction um, that, that the physical meeting gave them but there's no solid foundation so a solid foundation is is vital i think as leaders we know that but have we committed that solid foundation to the people uh, that we lead so that they've got something solid and strong in their lives that holds them when they can't meet with the pastor um, i know we've got quite a number of our african friends 
on board here today. And uh, good to see you guys. And we've had so many different countries we've been to in Africa. Um, but we've, we've got some very shallow churches that, and, and the people are so dependent upon coming to the pastor for a prayer because they have a, a need, a shortcoming of something's going wrong in their life. And they've not learned how to stand strong in that themselves, uh, in what, knowing what Jesus has done for them. And so now they're going to have to, they're going to have to because a lot of places, churches are closed and we can't come and run and ask the pastor to pray for us. It's time we learn to pray for ourselves and take the uh, authority that Jesus gave us and do just that. So uh, I want to thank you all. Um, Pastor Andrew, who led the Assemblies of God movement in Australia for about 20 years. Um, Jan Tutor, you've been probably, I think it's about 20 years uh, there at the head of the AOG in Romania. Um, PG, I know one of the times when we spoke, you said um, they asked you to come back to lead the movement because uh, it wasn't going quite how it ought to have been going. That was after you retired. So uh, what you said to me the other day, um, your, um, your schedule is now so busy uh, that you're, <laughs> you're living out of your suitcase. Um, it, it's okay because you're still only young. You're only 78, he told me, and he's living out of his suitcase and he's got a passionate desire to see people want to Christ and evangelize the world. So good on you. Appreciate that so much. I want to thank you all for being a part of it. I want to thank Phil for leading us so great. Uh, and everybody that's joined us, uh, some have come in a bit later, that's okay. We thank you for coming in. And um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to give you uh, an opportunity. I've got, um, <coughs> I've got our tech guy, uh, Ralph, is just going to put up in the chat box the, uh, the link for the registration. Um, and uh, that's up there. So if you want to grab that while that's on, if you've not already registered on our email list to get the uh, notifications about future where to now meetings, that's that's where you'll get it. I think um, email is reliable, Facebook and whatever else is a little bit hit and miss. But if you want to register there, you'll get the uh, email notifications. I think something exciting is happening. And uh, today it's been great to have... Um, world leaders with us. I thank you for coming. And uh, we're actually already in the process of talking to people for next month. So we has, as Joy said, we have um, uh, a victory meeting, which used to be physical. Um, and pastors and leaders were invited from all around Sydney. But obviously, now we're online. The um, the, the need for us to uh, keep in touch is great. So if you if you grab that uh, link and and register there, if you've not done so already, we'll be able to send you the information about the future uh, meetings that we'll be doing like this Zoom with different leaders. And we're aiming to get a young generation in next month. Um, so we have uh, some senior leaders with us who have got the experience and, and many years of experience of leadership under their belt. We're going to go to some exciting uh, younger leaders uh, around the world next month and see what they're doing. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that, um, like they, they asked, um, was it um, Solomon's, Solomon's son when he took over the kingdom? Uh, I can't remember his name now, but somebody will tell me, uh, what should we do? And he brought in all the elders and they told him what to do. And then he says, oh, I don't like that. So he brought in all the young people. Um, and he said, yes, I'll do that, which was, of course, his undoing. Um, but it's important that we hear from the older generation first. It's important that we listen to those who've gone before and have got some runs on the board and uh, built some things up. So thank you, guys. Appreciate that. And uh, if you want to grab that um, link, it's in the chat box. And uh, I want to thank my wife, Joy, for leading us and introducing us tonight. Um, she does a great job. 
And if you go to the, uh, the blog page where we uh, announce each person's uh, bio, uh, that's on, uh, on blogger.com, search for Beautiful Feet Task Force. If you don't have it, there's all the information there. And there's also the information how you can give an offering for tonight if you choose to do so. So we don't make a big deal about it, but uh, obviously in churches, uh, we still have offerings. And um, I was very inspired, Pastor Andrew, by your son's offering online uh, <laughs> and uh, what he's doing. It's great. Uh, we don't make a big deal about it, but of course, if you feel that uh, there's something that you'd like to do to help the ministry, then there's the opportunity there for you and the details. So tonight we're going to, um, we're just going to close with a word of prayer. I'm going to thank you for coming and being on here. And uh, if you can pass the word around when you get your notifications about next month, so that maybe a few more people and other leaders that you know can join us. So why don't we close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the wisdom of your leaders and for what has been said tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the commission that you've given to us as leaders to preach the gospel, to preach the kingdom of good news, and that salvation is found in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for helping, for equipping, and for leading each person that's a part of this meeting tonight, whether they're um, a listener or a speaker, we thank you, Lord, that the anointing that's here in this meeting from each person, Lord, will help us to receive something from you about how we can move forward in the ministry that you've called us to do and how we might uh, adapt to changing circumstances to be the kind of people that are going to make a difference in our world and in our communities. So, Father, I pray for your blessing of health and strength, your protection and your love and your guidance upon each person that's here tonight. Lord, regardless of what they do, their ministry, or whether they're a participant, I think we've been encouraged sufficiently to be out there and sharing the good news. So I thank you for that. Thank you for our speakers. And Lord, we pray that you will do everything that your church asks. We thank you, Lord, that we might be humble and see um, Lord, a change take place as we humble ourselves and seek your face, and then you'll heal our land. And so, God, we pray for the healing of our lands, but, Father, we pray that your church will humble itself and pray and seek your face. And so, Father God, we ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, good to see people involved in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you all. And we'll wish you well. And we'll be online again, uh, same time, first Friday of November. Look out for the uh, information. God bless you. Thank you.